Good afternoon, I'm Karen Bearden, President and CEO of the Myrtle Beach Area Chamber of Commerce. Welcome to today's webinar. We'd like to thank all of the businesses this week who have reached out to share their personal situation with us. They've asked a lot of questions and we're working very hard to answer all of those questions for folks. Uh, you've also provided a lot of really valuable information that we've been able to share with your fellow business leaders. So thank you for that this week. We'd also like to take a moment to thank our elected leaders uh, for their partnering with us during this really challenging time, especially our governor, Governor McMaster, Congressman Tom Rice, and Mayor Bethune and the Myr Myrtle Beach City Council. Uh, we greatly appreciate your efforts and your partnership. I'd now like to introduce our Director of Government Affairs, Jimmy Gray. Jimmy will now share with you key facts that you need to know about state and federal laws that were just passed that will indeed affect us, hopefully in a positive way, in our business community. So now I'd like to turn it over to Jimmy. Thank you, Karen, um, and thank you all for tuning in today. Um, I know that this is a busy time, a lot of uncertainty. Um, businesses are making hard decisions, employees are making hard decisions for them and their families, and the goal of today is to provide some clarity and maybe some updates on information that's happening in the advocacy arena as it relates to the COVID-19 virus that's really taken over our area, our state, and our country. Uh, for starters, I want to thank all the staff with the Myrtle Beach Area Chamber of Commerce. We have folks even in the room here today uh, that are taking time away from their families while teleworking uh, to be here to help us uh, continue doing business. So I uh, wanted to thank our staff for their hard work during this uh, epidemic that has taken over the entire state. Let's, let's start from a state level and look at really what the state response has been to the COVID-19 virus uh, as of just a couple minutes ago. Um, so the first thing that the state of South Carolina did was consider a request from Governor Henry McMaster to fund the Department of Health and Environmental Control, DHEC, as you probably know it, uh, a request to fund DHEC $45 million of emergency contingency funding. Earlier this week, the Senate approved that request 42 to nothing in a unanimous vote. And earlier this morning, um, the, the South Carolina House of Representatives approved the request again unanimously. I believe the vote was 120 to nothing. Shortly after, uh, minutes after, the South Carolina House of Representatives approved that request, uh, President Harvey Peeler and Speaker Jay Lucas ran the bill down to the governor's office and had it signed by the governor immediately. So uh, that $45 million request to DHEC from emergency contingency funding for the state has been authorized and is in the works. Now, what is in that $45 million that the House and the Senate approved? Um, it includes $15 million for staffing to support disease and contact surveillance. This also includes, includes lab testing and phone lines at DHEC. It also includes another $15 million for surplus medical equipment, something that we've been hearing is really a need for uh, medical facilities around the state, as well as nursing homes and senior care facilities. The legislation includes $5 million for more technology and lab support and cleaning support in state facilities, uh, an additional $2.5 million for uh, a public information campaign to take place on television um, and on the internet and radio. Uh, it includes $1.7 million to support patient quarantines, um, something that's gonna be critical to prevent the spread of this disease, and $1.3 million for the transportation of lab samples uh, to make sure that we're figuring out in a timely basis um, whether or not results are coming back positive or negative. Um, the legislation lastly includes $5 million in contingency funding for DHEC to handle additional emergencies as they come along. We also saw some news coming out of the state government and the federal government as it relates to uh, your pocketbooks, your, your tax payments. Um, so we are in a sensitive season right now. Everybody's gearing up, filling out their tax returns. It came out just earlier this week that the South Carolina Department of Revenue is granting a three-month extension on its state tax bills. Um, so you have until all taxes that were due from individuals and businesses that were due on April 1st now will be due on June 1st. And there will be no, uh, so long as you make your payments by June 1st, um, there will be no payments or no penalties um, or, uh, or punishments placed on businesses or individuals. This tax, it includes the South Carolina individual income tax, sales and use tax, admissions tax, and other taxes that are filed with the South Carolina Department of Revenue. Now, one thing that we haven't gained clarity on yet that we're working hard to find clarity on is uh, sales tax. So uh, monthly businesses pay their sales tax usually on the 20th of the month. 
to the State Department of Revenue. Our guidance is to pay that tax if you can currently. Um, we haven't received guidance that that monthly sales tax uh, check that's to be sent to the Department of Revenue. Um, our guidance is, is that that has not also been extended. Um, so we would encourage businesses to either pay that or to submit questions to the South Carolina Department of Revenue to see if that also was extended. And, and we'll certainly, certainly share any additional guidance that we receive at the federal level. Um, the federal government also is giving filers an additional 90 days to pay income taxes up to $1 million on taxes owed. Corporate filers Corporate filers will get the same length of time um, for but be able to pay amounts up to $10 million in taxes owed. So that's kind of an update at the federal and the state level for those taxes that are due. Now, one thing that we've seen over the course of the past day is a lot of uncertainty related to unemployment. Um, we've heard from the South Carolina Department of, uh, Ed of Education and Workforce that unemployment claims increased 400% uh, just in one day yesterday. So. You're seeing a surge of businesses and individuals making that tough decision of having to lay off employees. It's probably the hardest decision that an employer has to make and the toughest phone call that an employer has to make. Um, we wanted to share with you just kind of a glance at the State Unemployment Trust Fund and how things are currently looking. The latest data available is from FY 2019, um, so it's not 100% up to date, but the latest data available does show that the State Unemployment Trust Fund um, does meet the solvency requirements that are uh, encouraged by the U.S. Department of Labor. Um, the current, uh, or I should say that the 2019 trust fund level for unemployment assets was at $1,500,622,227. dollars uh, for FY 2019. Um, it's a significant, a, a significant amount of money that's in the trust fund currently, um, but certainly something that we're going to need to look at and going to seek additional state and federal relief um, at that trust fund amount if a quarter of the South Carolina workforce uh, was laid off and had to submit claims to the state uh, trust fund as it currently sits um, the trust fund would last about 10 weeks um, it would dry up after 10 weeks um, given the demand on the state unemployment trust fund federal uh, suggestions are that uh, you'd be able to last at least 20, 20 weeks um, on unemployment trust fund benefits so um, we will be seeking additional uh, guidance from the state and federal governments to support the unemployment trust fund. We also saw a great article today. One of our local media partners, WPDE, posted a great article about the service industry and, and restaurants in particular um, that are able to, uh, if they want to keep their employees, but also make sure that they're able to receive unemployment benefits, they do have that option through the Department of Education and Workforce in the state. And it just requires uh, the employer to file the request with DEW um, in order for their employees to stay on um, and receive unemployment benefits for up to six weeks. So I encourage uh, particularly restaurants to look at that as an option to keep some of that uh, core workforce that they like, um, but unfortunately due to circumstances uh, not of their own fault, uh, cannot afford to keep them on board for right now. Small business loans has been a really hot topic lately. Um, South Carolina has applied for uh, the, the US SBA Small Business Loan Program uh, in order to qualify for small businesses to be eligible to receive up to $2 million in financing uh, for for-profit companies that will be charged at an interest rate of 3.75%. Um, so despite the Fed cutting interest rates to nearly 0%, um, you will still have to pay interest on these small business loans. Uh, Governor McMaster has submitted the request and our approval uh, for businesses in South Carolina to receive those, uh, those loans uh, is imminent. So we will share that information with you uh, once we officially qualify for those loans. Let's turn the page to the federal side and talk about um, the federal government response to the, the coronavirus and COVID-19. Um, we saw initially in the first couple weeks of this uh, outbreak, there was a $8.3 billion appropriation given largely focused on testing. Um, but just last night, President Trump uh, signed legislation that passed the House and the Senate um, that does a number of things. And we want to walk through uh, what, what that legislation does. First off, it, it expands unemployment assistance, something we just talked about. The legislation provides an additional billion dollars to states for unemployment assurance. Um, a key step, but it's not going to be enough uh, given the demand on unemployment assurance around the country. Um, so we will look to additional pieces of legislation to further expand that. The legislation also requires insurers to cover testing for the COVID-19 virus. Um, private insurers will be required to uh, cover this and at no cost to the customer. Additionally, for folks without health insurance, 
Uh, the legislation includes a billion dollars to the National Disease Control Agency to make sure that folks without health insurance are able to get testing if they believe they, they should get testing. Um, there is nutritional assistance in the bill, uh, $500 million to the SNAP program. It also waives any work requirements uh, for the SNAP program so that um, folks that need food um, are able to get food for them and their families. Paid leave is something that's been a really hot topic for um, businesses in our area, asking what they can and cannot do for their employees. Um, the, the legislation, it does provide that employers with fewer than 500 employees that are not laying off their employees are required to provide as much as 12 weeks of job protected leave. Job protected leave is not the same as paid leave. The legislation includes a requirement that um, employers with the same number of employees, uh, 500 or fewer, are required to provide up to 80 hours of paid sick leave for individuals that are uh, suffering from uh, illnesses related to the coronavirus. Um, once those 80 hours have gone by, uh, employers are required to provide 100% of their salary for those 80 hours, but after the 80 hours expires, they're required to provide two-thirds of their salary uh, to employees in perpetuity of this pandemic. So certainly it's something that's going to be at a high cost. It's, it's a very employee-friendly bill, um, but this only unfortunately applies to employees that have not been laid off by their employers. Um, so employees that uh, have been laid off are really th focused on those unemployment insurance options that have been provided by the state and federal um, businesses. Let's turn the page and talk about tax credits. The legislation does recognize that there's a huge cost associated to businesses that are going to keep folks on board related to this um, paid leave pr provision. So there are employer tax credits um, up to uh, $511 per day when an employee is receiving sick leave um, to care for themselves and then $200 when they're caring for a loved one or a family member. And then another question that we've gotten is related to uh, self-employed individuals or contractors. The legislation does address self-employed individuals and contractors and provides them with the same level of uh, assistance that the, the employers of larger small businesses receive. Now going back to the paid leave piece, if a small business is able to, of 50 or fewer employees is able to prove to the U.S. Department of Treasury that all of these paid leave requirements would have an undue burden on their business and their business viability from staying open, they are able to receive a waiver from the U.S. Department of Labor from uh, complying with those provisions of the statute. So that is pretty much what we were covered in this Families First Coronavirus Act of 2019. Um, now there's been a ton of news about um, different ideas that are out there that we wanted to just kind of turn the page and address some of the rumors, some of the speculation um, regarding next steps that Congress might take. Um, Congress and the Senate, it sounds like the Senate is going to remain in session, uh, the U.S. Senate, I should, I should say, uh, will remain in session uh, over the weekend, it sounds like, and into next week. The House is not expected to come back into session currently until March 27th. Um, this is all kind of complicated by the fact that two members of Congress on the House side have tested positive for the COVID-19 virus. So certainly comp um, complicates negotiations and how the body is able to get together when those folks are not able to, uh, they're required to self-quarantine. So uh, it will be challenging to get that for, for in order for a deal to be able to be met. But let's talk about what some of the options uh, are out there that are being considered. Uh, first one, the one that has gotten the most traction is this check to individuals, a um, $1,000 check to all individuals. Yes, it's a real thing that's being proposed. Um, the U.S. Department of Treasury has issued guidelines this morning um, outlining what that check might look like. And what it's looking like right now is that it would be $1,000 per individual in a household. So if you use a family of four, for instance, with two parents and two children, you'd be $1,000 for uh, the, the parent number one, num $1,000 for parent number two, and then $500 per minor. So as much as $3,000 in terms of an indi individual assistance to taxpayers um, in direct checks from the U.S. government. The way that would be issued uh, in terms of uh, the U.S. Treasury's guidelines are $250 billion on April 6th and $250 billion uh, beginning May 18th. I should, stip I should stipulate all of this by saying that all ideas are seemingly on the table right now from a federal response. The U.S. government is really leaving all options on the table. Um, there's also efforts to bolster the small business interruption loans. Um, the Small Business Administration loan program, like we said, is not interest-free and is capped at $2 million. Discussions have been, ha have been had 
to uh, expand that program to lower the interest rate and potentially uh, increase the borrowing capacity for small businesses. We've, al we've also seen some proposals from uh, Minority Leader Chuck Schumer in the Senate um, to bolster a surge appropriations, um, looking at $400 billion in public health medical supplies and treatment capacity, um, and it really just expands a lot of the federal loan and grant programs that are out there um, and invests in things like public education and focus at getting Americans back to work. Um, there's also a, uh, a, a discussion currently about immediate loan payment forbearance um, for all federally backed mortgages and moratoriums nationally on evictions and foreclosures so long as this pandemic is ongoing. Um, legislative ideas are out there to bolster Buy America provisions um, to try and get supply, supply chains to be smaller and to help America be more reliant on itself. Um, and then also, lastly, I would just also add that unemployment, um, Congress is going to need to step up to work with states to bolster uh, unemployment trust funds in states around the country. Um, because currently, like we said, as South Carolina currently sits, we've seen a 400% increase in uh, requests to unemployment trust funds. So I want to just kind of wrap up our spiel here before we get into questions, um, saying that travel and workforce protection is critical for not only our country, but particularly the Myrtle Beach area. Um, in the Myrtle Beach area, if you look at the uh, annual report that Karen and her team put together, 57,000 uh, jobs in the Myrtle Beach area are in the travel and tourism industry. So we have great partners that we work with, like US, the U.S. Travel Association, um, that are looking at programs currently at the federal level to uh, include loans, to include grants, to small businesses that have had to lay off employees or that have had to seriously alter their hours in order to provide additional assistance. Assistance means keeping, being able to keep your doors open. Assistance means um, once this coronavirus pandemic is over, making sure that folks are coming back to these tourism destinations around the country like the Myrtle Beach area um, and spending those hard earned dollars because we know that uh, tourism is the number one industry for our area and, and the services that we've all come to enjoy living here and working here. Uh, tourists helped us pay for a lot of those services. So I'll kind of leave it at that and, and check with Karen and Amanda to see if there are any uh, questions that we had from folks that were watching. Um, I know this is a, a moving topic and uh, it sounds like just in about five or 10 minutes, we're gonna hear from Governor McMaster. Um, more news might've come out just as I've been talking. So I'll shut up now and see if there are any questions that we haven't covered. I had one asking about if a business is much smaller than that 500, they said that you answered it, um, but if you could reiterate what they can do if they're under 50. Small sure, under 50. absolutely. So the legislation uh, says that if you are an, uh, an employer that has 50 or less employees and you would like to, you're not doing any layoffs or anything like that you're keeping your employees full-time um, and and retaining everyone uh, the legislation says that you have to offer sick leave but if you can prove to the u.s department of labor um, and necessary state folks that uh, offering this sick leave this paid sick leave for 80 hours 100 percent of pay and then two-thirds pay in perpetuity um, would pr would prove an, a burden on your business and potentially threaten your viability as a business that you are not required to per, to comply with those provisions in the law. So it does exempt those are employees that have folks less than 50 employees or less. Another question asking if it's correct that employees can receive six weeks unemployment without restrictions to look for other employment. Yes, so that's a, that's a great question. And uh, the answer is yes. We found out today, I encourage folks to go to the Department of Employment and Workforce's website uh, to read about this. This is something that uh, WPDE did a great article on today um, for folks, it looks like just in the service industry, um, the Department of Education and Workforce is, or I'm sorry, Employment and Workforce, I keep saying education, um, is offering that uh, six weeks of uh, full-time, uh, six weeks of unemployment insurance uh, to folks while they're uh, not working, uh, but they are still allowed to uh, stay with the company. So they're able to stay with their employer and it doesn't require them to uh, go out and look for another job. One caveat of being on normal unemployment insurance is that you are required to be actively seeking, for, seeking another job uh, while you're receiving those benefits from the state trust fund. Um, this six week requirement would waive that seeking job requirement and allow folks to get that, get that um, payment and that benefit for at least six weeks. Thank you, Jimmy. Thank you, Amanda. Any other questions coming in from the business community right now? Uh, we've got one asking how long would the two thirds pay continue? 
the way that I read that legislation, the, the question is how long will the two thirds pay continue? So going back to the paid sick leave portion, mm -hmm. um, it says that the federal legislation says that you have to do 80 hours, 100% of paid sick time um, after that 80 hours expires in perpetuity or until this pandemic expires, mm -hmm. um, you're required to pay those employees two thirds of their earning salary um, in perpetuity so long as the pandemic is going on. So um, that's really something that would uh, be at the discretion of the governor um, to uh, so long as the state of emergency, as long as we, the state is in a state of emergency, uh, you would be required to pay that employee um, two thirds of their earning capacity um, until the state of emergency expires. Thank you, Jimmy. Uh, one other thing that we'd like to bring to your attention is uh, our partners at the South Carolina Chamber will be holding their own webinar tomorrow. That is Friday, March 20th at 3 p.m. Uh, this is also uh, a webinar uh, that is really trying to break down again um, a, uh, HR 6201, uh, which did come into law yesterday at President Trump's signing. Um, the real focus here will be um, having two employment uh, legal minds, uh, again, share some more guidance around uh, the unemployment compensation, paid sick leave, family and medical leave. So again, if this is something that is uh, really important uh, to you and you want to understand more deeply FMLA, sick pay requirements, your legal obligations related to the virus and its impact on your employees, uh, then we urge you to take advantage of this webinar tomorrow. Uh, you may register as we have at scchamber.net. And again, that begins at 3 p.m. Uh, tomorrow afternoon, Friday, March 20th. Uh, your chamber here at the Myrtle Beach Area Chamber of Commerce uh, thanks you for uh, tuning in today and we promise you that we are going to continue to share with you other relevant um, webinars uh, in the coming days and weeks um, as we go through this uh, uncharted territory together. Um, so again, if you have suggestions about other topics that are hot for you that you really want to get some more guidance and information on, uh, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. Uh, and we are we'll be happy to organize that for you. And again, we thank you for your time. We hope you tune in to the governor's press conference beginning at 4.30 p.m. today. Thank you.